three to go. Yeah. Still a couple games. They played it really slow and steady, which I really liked from them because they didn't want to have those 5v5s happen very early on. They ended up getting such a great gold advantage from their play around Dragon, their objective control and poking people around that they were able to take that very, very easily and methodically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a massive effort from Easy. He just was insane. But we'll see if they can do it again. We're going pretty quickly into pick spans, I think, in just a second. Yeah, it's coming up right here. I'm really curious as to what happens because they're swapping sides here. And that's going to be really big. So we saw all top lane bans. We ended up seeing the Rengar band away and then the fir Lee Sin first pick. Not going to have that luxury this time. They might actually end up banning their own Lee Sin. Mm -hmm. But then that's going to leave more top laners open. They have to ban away things like Vayne, which they took away from Prototype last time to try to get him on something a little more uncomfortable. And the Gnar might be up for first pick here. Yeah, it's very possible. Jace, of course, was taken off the board. They definitely fear that one. Lee Sin now banned on the red side as Zenith takes that one. We won't see those two champions in the game. Rumble, kind of a no-brainer as well, but again, Nar's still an option. So is Maokai. There's a lot of top laners available this time, and Soul King might be happy. Yeah, I'm really, really wondering like what this last ban is going to be, because they banned out the Rumble from the Solo King. He also plays a lot of things like Rise and Renekton and Shivana, but those haven't been in the meta for a long time. They leave Nar up, they might have to first pick it themselves, or they might get a Maokai. Mm -hmm. We do see the uh, Rengar ban, and then there's Nar, so that does come out at the very end of it all, because I think they realized they weren't going to get it, but Solo King has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. The Rengar out, as well as the Lee Sin. Leaves Kha'Zix on the table again, but what else would Shorter Ace like to pick up here, and will he even prioritize that jungle? I think they kind of have to at this point. Yeah, at this point, he might go with the J4, we'll have to see, but it's going to be the Janna priority here. Because they said, you know, a lot of top tier things for their their players have been off the field. But that Mimo, he's going to take the J4 away. Wow. They're putting so, like, that was insta lock there. They They're want him on Kha'Zix. so much pressure on this guy. Look at that. They take away the Jinx. They're just taking the champions away from Final Five. They're saying, your champion pools are so small. We're going to throw these three bands at you. We're going to take away, like, one, two, and then boom. And then you have nothing. It's yeah. ridiculous how well Zenith is playing this champion. This like, is hard so for far. Final Five. This is really hard for them to answer back, and you can see they're really thinking, where do we go from here? Okay, the Lulu hover right now. Uh, I can't help but thinking that that would probably be Gate. I mean, it's an option for Rux, but it's really not been as strong for a while, and I, th I think they're kind of fumbling, thinking, okay, what do we do from here? Because we've just lost a massive amount of our champion pools. Yeah, and having these small champion pools is a really big problem. Like, you can play the stuff that is really like S tier, you're like, oh, we play the Gnar, we play, you know, these things, we play the Janna, that's fine. When you have somebody who has a small champion pool, and junglers are especially susceptible to that, considering that there isn't a huge jungle pool at the moment that people are like, yeah, these five champions are really great. It's kind of like four or three. And you take those away, really narrow it down for them. Yeah, and you do see the Sewer Rat coming out. That's going to be prototype this time with his Jinx taken away, but they've comboed up with Braum on the side of Xena. That is kind of an unsung combination. Lucy and Braum used to be incredibly strong, but the attack speed bonus on Jinx Q is incredibly effective at comboing up for those stuns. And we can see a pretty bruisery lane. Yeah, and the big thing about that is you'll get the stun from a long range. Even if you're just like one, two, then they go away. You can get the fish bones on them from a long mm -hmm. range. It's enough duration to throw some chompers in front of them, close that distance. So this composition is something that you're going to have a little more protection for. And I also really like the fact, sorry, excuse me there, that they have that Braum and they're going to be able to stop the Orianna ball sometimes because you can't command attack through that. It actually stunts it and it stops it in front of you. So if he wants to command attack Shockwave, he's not going to be able to get that off. Yeah, it's going to be rough for him too. And it looks like they are dipping pretty deep into the jungle pool right now. Shorter is going to be bringing out the Nocturne. It's not something we've seen in a while. And they have a potential ball delivery system there. They also have the Maokai which is going to give them that. So they really want to find those fights, but they're going to have a rough laning phase. Twitch is not the strongest laning champion, and they're up against the Jinx Braum lane. Yeah, once again, Final Five, they have this team composition for themselves that is very 5v5 oriented. And I love the fact that Gate, you know, he's back on that Orianna. He had a pretty okay Orianna game in terms of farm, but his shockwaves were not on point. One or two people every time they were getting flashed away from because they weren't over and over again. But here's the thing, is now he has a lot of ball delivery systems. Twitch can do it with the submarine ball right on top of them. Maokai is going to be able to twist and advance on somebody and guarantee that they are locked up in it. So this is a very dragon fight oriented team composition here for Final Five. Mid game power that transitions into late game. And here's the thing, is that there's even more late game power here from Zenith. So there's some timers here for both, where Final Five is going to be a little stronger in the dragon fights, but Zenith is going to have more picks with Syndra, and they're also going to have Braum and J4 backing that up. So it's a little Not more picky. Versus, well, I guess it's opposite. Hey, that, there we since go. it's backwards, <laughs> this team over there, I can, I can do this now. <laughs> this team over there, that one over there. I'll just that back away from Very, this. very team fight oriented. Yeah. This team right here. You've got Kasten too on Solo King. 
And that has been something that they've been interested in playing for a while. I think I had too much fun with that. I had way too yeah. much fun with that. No, it's okay. We can have fun. This is you know, this is this is, <laughs> no, this is no this fun is, allowed. Oh, yes, fine. So. All right. That's okay. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be fun, oh. but anyways, I guess I was wrong about that. As the timer ticks down, we've got two again very very starkly different and characteristic comps. Zenith has talked about the fact that they like to play very versatile, but they know this team. They know Final Five, and they know that they don't want to face them head to head. Grab advantages little by little. See what they can do and just try to chip away at those advantages and lock them down. Don't let them have any gold. Looks like they can do that with this comp. It's just all in the delivery. Yeah, and I definitely think that they both have different win conditions and it's very distinctly different. So we're going to see these teams kind of playing to their strengths again. I definitely trust that Zenith knows what they're doing after that first game. Cast in mm -hmm. top for the solo king. You know, he's become a top laner for a while now. Absolutely. Especially we've seen it in Korea, a lot of other places. And yeah. Well, that's Champion Select. We're going to be loading up onto the Rift in just a moment. But again, guys, want to remind you, tweet us at LOE Sports and use the hashtag LCS Expansion to let us know what you think, performances and predictions, and all those things that you would like to tell us. Get a conversation going. We'll read it. Maybe not on air, but we'll read it. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely read it. Not on air, but we'll I'll, be able to. I'll read it. I'll <laughs> see what you guys we'll think about these things. Who you think won Champion Select and all that good stuff. But this set so far... Zenith just looks like they have the upper hand, but I do think Final Five, they've had the tools to win. They just need to get their shot calling more in order and just take a deep breath because they're they're panicking. They're using their abilities too quickly. That's a big thing with Orianna is you wait for the perfect opportunity. We saw him use his shockwave on Frost. Didn't even make sure that that guy didn't have spell shield available and he was just able to spell shield it just very, very easily. Yeah, and you can see Final Five already wanting to do something early on. They know that Zenith has this tendency to make some early plays. Bimo could try for some aggression in the jungle, but they're going to be ready for it if he does check in that brush. That is a pretty deadly place to be. Rux is just tossing a couple saplings out, making sure they don't come up through the top side. But this time, again, Zenith, they're mixing it up from what they've been doing in scrims. They're not going for anything early, and they're making Final Five expect that. And that just wastes their time. Hey, when somebody has a very, very distinct pattern or a very distinct play style, like you said, Zenith, Every time they play, they have level one every single time, and they're not. Yeah. Sometimes the mind games are the real strategies, and it's like, what if Prototype <laughs> ended up taking Barrier this game or Heal? Well, no, that's that that's crazy. Exhaust. That would never happen. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, no, that, that not at all. And you can see, yeah, there you go. So he's he should be in a pretty decent dueling situation with Twitch, oh, yeah. but they need that five v five. Now Mimos heading up to the top. They might actually go for a delayed invade here, but they're going to run directly into Final Five if they do that. Gate is the only one not with the party, and he could be there pretty soon. They're going to let Solo King hang out in front. But again, this this could be bloody. Both these teams are reading each other really well right now, except if they face check this. They might do it. Oh. Solo King, oh, he's looking tasty. Uh-oh, they're going to look for the chase to get that out. Oh, the sapling, yeah, they're going to see this one. They're going to try this. They're a little That's sandwiched hot. here. Though. This could be a problem. Rule 18 taking a lot of pokes. Solo King as well, and that may have just telegraphed a potential lane swap. Looks like it's not going to happen now. Prototype and Rux on the run. They're going to get... That winner's by Prog out. Oh, oh there they have it. They have this done. They might find it. It's first blood. And that is actually going over too easy as they pick up prototype. So that is a good reason to have a Braum level one. It's also a really good reason to use your flash if you're Twitch. Because yeah. you're going to give up that blue buff. You give up a lot of pressure. Like, granted, your like, first blood isn't worth that much anymore. Four assists. Everybody gets a little bit of experience, so they'll hit it earlier in lane. And they're going to get themselves this blue. They're going to have to trade on the opposite side. And it is a lane swap here. For Zenith. Yeah. And, you know, this is, in a, in a lot of interesting ways, this isn't a, a terrible move for them because, yeah, maybe they have a stronger lane in general, but Braum does have some trouble before six. Uh, you want to get Frost on Jinx up to a, a pretty comfortable level anyways, even if they should be able to edge out Prototype and Rule 18. But at this point, they actually might go for a fast push. We see the jungle buddy system here. Mimo going to be comboing up with the Solo King. They're not even interested in that bot side for the time being. And talk about throwbacks. We haven't seen this for a bit. Yeah, it's pretty much standard. When you do a lane swap, you just have the top laner just roam around with them. You know, not much has changed despite the patches being five different than what we played on Worlds. Yeah, that's true. If they had gone for like a fast push or something, that'd be a little bit different. But you're right, this is a little bit more normal uh, as they don't really need to worry about getting down there early. You can see the slow push from Prototype. They're not going to be interested in poking the tower down too hard unless they have a whole mini wave backing it up, as you see. And there we go. Nemo's going to be uh, able to pick his own red up as well. So, with all of that, double buffs for both the junglers this time. No shenanigans in there. And you see everything else is pretty much normal after the lane swap situation. And it, we're setting up to probably be a much calmer game so far. 
It's going to be calm, calmer in the early game. I'm pretty sure that when these dragon fights start coming out, though, you can see the composition here for Final Five, despite giving up that early kill. He's still going to have his flash, right? So you use that. You know that Braum doesn't have his. So if there is jungle pressure on that side, we'll have to see. But they are going to let Jinx, they're going to let Frost solo farm that top lane. He did kind of hard carry in terms of assist last game off the back of the poke, because it was just poke, poke, poke with Jace, run in with Sivir. So now they kind of have more of a picky composition. Yeah, this is just a little bit different. Of course, a lot of CC train if they need it, but they have to hit that magical level six before they'll really get the explosive potential. And now Frost, deal the duelist one out with Rux. It should be too much trouble, but the tree has quite a lot of sustain, and Arcane Smash will make him think twice about checking into that. But, yeah. you know, they, they let the, the support run down with Solo King, so, you know, that's also pretty standard stuff as well, but they need to let Kasten kind of get up to that later level. Anyways, he's going to have a pretty rough, rough laning time against Prototype and Rule 18, being melee and all. Yeah. And a big reason that he wasn't able to trade up top is because there's just such a huge minion wave in favor of Rux that when Frost auto-attacked, he was taking a whole bunch of minion damage on top of it. But look at this, the roam coming up from Easy and Mimo into that top lane. They're looking for Rux. They're going to get seen by this ward, though. They know it's there, but they're willing to take this risk. Yeah, he's going to be able to walk away from that one for the time being. Almost gets stunned, actually has to dodge out of that one. And Whoa. he's actually doing a pretty good job at avoiding skill shots. Finally, going to take a little bit of damage, but that really doesn't accomplish too much. And Easy gave up some lane pressure for that one. Now there's some... Dueling going on in the bot side, but Prototype surely going to get the better of that one, and he makes them go back. Solo King, this time he's not living up to his name when he's in a duel lane. So I was talking about how Zenith are taking away the champions of Final final 5, but the fact that they picked the Twitch and then they picked the Braum, I said I love the Braum pick, and the second reason that I really like it, aside from the fact that, you know, I mentioned before, he is able to stop the Twitch Spray and Pray through, or sorry, Radisat Tat. Appease, through the Unbreakable, appease everybody yeah. with, with that. And not just that, he's also able to do it, like you mentioned, yeah. on the Oriana Ball. I mean, this is, it's a pretty good counter choice in general. Braum has always been that flexible anti-engage, as well as somebody who can force a fight. Now, Frost, he's in a little bit of trouble here. Ooh. Doesn't realize there's a Nocturne in that one, and he has to run away, but he's getting feared. Flame Chopper's down, doesn't even matter. And that Shorter Ace is going to answer with a kill. Shorter Ace. One. Getting one of his first kills of the entire series. Just coming up to that top lane, having the gank assistance there from Maokai and Rux. He wasn't doing the standard, I'm just going to keep roaming around. He's like, I'm able to farm in this lane. I'm Maokai, I'll just auto attack. I'm going to be perfectly fine. And then Shorter Ace gives him the help that he needs and they free him up. And they aren't even going to return with the dragon on Zenith's side like last game. But now they're able to have this pressure. Just a ton of pink wards here from, uh, from Zenith too. Like I was watching that and they put a lot of emphasis on the ward control. Like the Solo King has a pink ward. Their support, K1, he's had that pink ward forever. He just hasn't been able to push out in that bot lane because both those members with pink wards have been down there. Mm -hmm. So they're waiting for Dragon. They're waiting for something to that they could set up for. And now they're lane swapping it back. And here's the thing is Frost, he's going to clear this wave out. He's going to continue to push. He already backed and got his pickaxe. Yeah, so he's a little bit ahead right now, just on the up and up, and he's going to force Prototype to do the same thing now. So you see him moving away. He may not pick up a pickaxe, but he's going to back off for the time being because Rule 18 is also not there. Now Rux and the Solo King faded to clash once again. They're going to just poke each other down, but for the time being, it's really just a wet noodle fight until they get to that later point. Dragon, they're looking for it, pinging that they want to get a little bit more vision control. Seven minutes, still a little bit early, but they might be able to contest it. And there is some vision here. They're not going to spot that one ward, so they will be aware of this. But again, Final Five is doing nothing to stop this. They're not moving in. They're not collapsing. They're not even thinking about it. Yeah, the problem here is that if they show up to this fight, there's a level 6 on Jinx. There's level 6 on Easy. Gate has no mana. He's level 7 just pushing in the mid. He wouldn't be able to ultimate even if he wanted to. And Prototype hasn't backed his back timers off. He didn't expect Frost to show up that early and at level five, so he backed up, and instead of backing, he went to the double golems, he went to go get some vision, so he's just sitting on that Doran's blade still, as opposed to the pickaxe. So if they showed up to that fight, less combat stats, less levels, less ultimates, not a good fight for final five. And it's all a matter of timing. Zenith able to hit those perfectly. Now Rux wants to go in here. He has shorter ace, and Solo King might be in a little bit of trouble. He can take a solo fight, but not a 2v1. Rux gonna flash away from the tower damage as he took a lot of hits on that before he was able to get a kill, but excellent work right there, and another kill in the pocket of Shorter Ace. Yeah, no flash used from the Solo King, and also he didn't have his ultimate at, up yet, and I was talking about how the ultimates were so crucial during that dragon fight. Turns out, more ultimates, more money in the top lane. Apparently, yep. Still need to hit that magical level six. You saw Rux was able to do it, got the Vengeful Maelstrom on, and as a result, they will be able to pick off that turret, get a little bit of extra gold into their pocket. So with that, pretty much counteracts the dragon, but all the same, Zenith still finding what they can. This time, Shorter Ace has really been trying to beat up on Solo King, though. 
Yeah, and he did that last game too. Well, he's just trying to beat up on the top lane in general and try to get Rux going. And yeah, that really is kind of one of the keys to success, or it has been. Did it last game too. Yeah. I mean, he was spotted out a lot, so he wasn't really able to get us involved. But this time, despite the pretty solid vision, as you mentioned, from Zenith, they've really been doing it around objectives they tried to take. Last game, it was much more of a proactive, Mimo is going to make sure you never go unseen. He is big brother. This time, it's been a little bit more... Mimo. Haphazard. <laughs> Mimo is just like, I'm over the wall! Yeah. Ah. You can't escape. Yep. So easy going to be able to grab himself a blue buff. And again, they continue this trend of trying to take little advantages where they can. But this tower has its days numbered. Prototype and Rule 18 able to combo up and finish that one off on the back of a pretty big minion wave. But even with two towers to none right now, Zenith still looking okay. They just have to stem some of this really quick pushing pressure that Final Five is throwing out. Yeah, level six is coming out here. They know that Frost doesn't have his flash because he used it previously up in the top lane to escape from Rox. And if they keep that timer, they will know. So the paranoia is going to be extra effective here, and also the fact that Prototype will be able to stealth up that far. So now, they're going to have to play really safely on the side of Zenith for that AD carry. Yeah, it's going to be a touch-and-go game. And there's actually a slight lead here because of the tower gold from Final Five, but with nothing else to take on the bot side of the map, there's really no reason for them to be here. Short Race was looking for you know, potentially a lane gank, but it's kind of hard to gank somebody when the tower's already gone. Yeah, they have to back and just get some items for themselves. There'll be a little bit of a power spike here for Final Five over Zenith Esports. But Zenith, they've invested a lot into the ward control, the ward game, the vision, in terms of those pink wards all across the inventory and the greens. Mm -hmm. They and just have to place them down and get objectives yeah. off them. But Dragon was taken, so they're good. Yeah, Final Five has placed a lot of their own wards too, just trying to make sure they don't get invaded. This time they've had a pretty good job of keeping wards out of their own jungle, so Shorter Ace has been less sighted, but if trends continue, we might see a healthy dose of Nocturne in the top lane. Yeah, and having cast Challenger, you know, for the past year, I really have to commend both of these teams, regardless of, like, win or lose, that they both actually have really good vision control. Last game, Final Five was really lacking there, and Zenith really just played their win conditions, but these guys understand, you know, League of Legends at a really high level, and I appreciate the fact that they're playing as a team and not as, like, solo QE as I've seen in the past. These are also the mid-tier teams, too. It seems like everybody's game has been upped this year, and it's been incredible to see the Vision game especially evolve. So, yeah, coming out of these teams, they've been, some of them have been together for a reasonable amount of time. Some of them have been not as long, but it really has been an overall leveling up of the game across the board. You can see it coming to Zenith here. Here we go. And look at that. Roop. Goodbye, Roll 18. He's just completely caught out and gone. And a big reason that they've all upped their play is during this offseason, a lot of teams get to scrim LCS teams. Because they, they don't want to give each other strategies. They don't want to show themselves to, you know, somebody they might possibly be facing. And same thing with LCS teams. They don't want to start the season and be like, whoa, wait, wait a second. We've been scrimming these guys this entire time. They know us. So they've been able to whip new things out against LCS teams. And LCS teams have been up the level of the challenger scene as well. Absolutely. As well as LCS players who have dropped out and still want another taste. Yeah, we have a lot of players that have kind of had that LCS experience as well across the board in this tournament. Rux. Yep, he's had he's had some as well. So, uh, and you know, even if they haven't been competing in it, you're right. They've been able to scrim against those teams. And I've, I've had it said from several of these teams talking to them that they consider every one of these matches just like, in the words of, I think I was talking to enemy esports manager, every game is like we're playing against Cloud9. They want to think that we're not going to give any little thing up and we're going to scrim against the best teams so that we then can pull something off against these teams that we also consider to be at that level. It, the line is blurring there. Well, it should be because two of these teams are going to end up in the LCS. Absolutely. playing against Cloud9. Not every game, eh? but every, a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we'll see what happens. Uh, it could be one of these guys. I mean, so far, Zenith, they're a game up. This time, they're a little bit less proactive trying to push down objectives on the map. There has been some good ward coverage from Final Five. I think they've realized some of the mistakes they made last game. But Zenith is just as cautious as ever in taking straight 5v5s. That is just playing into the Final Five strategy, but they've been able to avoid it so far, and that's a pretty impressive feat. Dragon's up in 40 seconds. Don't know how long they'll be able to avoid it, but... They, no, no ultimates, no Nocturne They do events. need to start grabbing objectives back. That has been one thing Final Five has had some serious trouble with. So far this series, they've not been able to secure a single Dragon. Yeah, a yeah, single dragon for themselves would really help them out. They've also lacked in the blue control and the just jungle control in general. But the fact that they swap sides, can, uh, Mimo is not exactly on a jungler that he's 100% comfortable on, not like his top three. It's kind of up there still. And the fact that it's not one of those extremely aggressive ones that will deal a ton of damage in the mid-late game. Jarvan's kind of, you get one damage item, you get some picks early, 
then you're a team fight master. Yeah. Well, and you know, Mimo is a jungler that does a little bit more solo effort to try and make things happen for his team, where a shorter ace is kind of that guy who says, okay, where do you guys need me? I will gank. So far, it's worked out well for him twice. He's been beating up on the oh. solo king. Wow, Rule 18 getting caught here. Again. Easy. Yep. That, we have talked a little bit about that, too. Rule 18's had some trouble as well as he gets solo wards out. And this is... This is the mark of a team that has had some coordination issues. They don't ward together. Uh oh, they're caught up. Oh. There's one. Rule 18 is down. They didn't focus on prototype. Knew they didn't have the damage, but easy able to unleash the power on that support. And final five is in full retreat. This dragon is live. Zenith is trying to take charge here. There is a contest available, but they're going to pull this one out of the pit and say, come and take it if you can. They have a teleport on Solo King if they need it. And this dragon might just fall back into their hands. Right now, Rux, he looks like he wants to contest this, but no, there's the TP coming out. Uh, I think that just says, come and make our day. Frost actually zoning. Shockwave oh. gonna pull him in. They get the paranoia. Frost is being chased down. The dragon's regenning, but it's Gate that picks up Mimo. And Frost able to take out Shorter Ace. The oh. rocket's in. Prototype's low. Solo King able to pick that one up, and he finds Prototype even more. And he's going to be just flashing away from that one as he couldn't get out on the Rift Walk. But Rux now taking Here up all the damage, too. They're still coming in. Rule 18. He's back. The Monsoon's on, but that's not going to deter them for long. And they may be blinking, but they found themselves two kills for one. Mimo's down. They have no smite, so the Dragon is not going to get done just yet. But they're not done with the fight at all. Rule 18 finding himself caught. Tiny health bar, and they have to back away because Rux was there. Everybody has tiny health bars right now. It's just a poke back and forth, just an absolute bloodbath. No, people not, aren't necessarily dying, but they're getting chipped down really hard, and this dragon is completely off the table for Zenith at this moment. But they're going to heal up and try to come back. Gate needs to pretty much do the same. Yeah, it's Game of Chicken. Very dangerous for a minute there, where everybody just standing around with blinking health bars, hoping that the brush didn't get face-checked. And I think they might want to think twice about that one. You're right. Zenith's saying, okay, we can take this. But this time, Final Five, they find a fight now. All the same, Mimo's back, and they're trying to sneak this one out. There isn't vision directly here, but now they get it. So Short Race is going to know this is happening. I don't think he can come in for a steal. He's got well, no flash. He'd have to walk all the way around. No flash, no ultimate there either. Yeah, second win, second round. Zenith is going to take a second dragon of this game and get a little bit more golds in their pocket. So now, even though they're two towers down, they have the gold edge. And they're going to check this for the pink ward. Good play there to clear it out. And rule 18, he's skipping rules 1 through 17, which is don't face check the bushes. Especially not when you're warding. He hasn't really had too much luck there, but they have been focusing him pretty hard. Easy unleashed the power on him last time, and now they're going to realize short race in that brush, but still, you see what oh, he easy. wants to do. Oh, he's almost caught again. Oh, oh. oh boy. Okay, you know you don't have to worry about rules 1 through 17 if rule 19 is go ahead and just dodge skill shots. He's fine. Yeah, he's got to get those mechanics. So now they're going to split a little bit. Frost doing the same thing that oh. prototype tried last game. Here comes Wait, the clear. rocket. Going to go all the way, and it's not going to deter them too much. Lands on prototype, but he's able to life steal it all back up. Here we go. They're looking to defend this, and they just show enough force for F5 to just back away. Yeah, just some wave clear there to help them out in that mid lane and just dissuade them from poking down the turret. Mimo, he's going to back right now, see what he buys for himself. I want to see what Jarvan build he goes for. And yeah, it looks like he's going to go a little tanky right after his jungle item. He's not going to get anything else in terms of the offensive. Well, they have to watch that CC train. It is pretty brutal if they get caught up in it. So the team fight, it's almost kind of like each team, despite the fact that Zenith pretty convincingly won that at the end there. Both teams have taken a leaf out of each other's books. You see Final Five able to apply a little bit of pressure around the map when they know that Zenith is not around, and Zenith is less afraid to fight with this composition. Yeah, and they also have 3,000 gold advantage at this point in the game, whereas before they didn't have as big a lead at this point. They've held on to some turrets. They might, yeah, you know, like it's pretty much the same as yeah. last game. About the, right. The dragons are Zenith, you know, they put a lot of emphasis on them in terms of ward control, vision control, and picking people off before it. And Final Five, they just aren't grouping as a five man team. Prototype, he's looking for the picks. He's got his Blade of the Ruined King. Jinx, Frost, he's ahead. He has his Infinity Edge already. It's going to be really hard for Prototype to actually end up dueling somebody unless he pops right on top of them and they're alone. Like, yeah. This yeah. is something Zenith's really not been doing much. They're not going off alone with a few exceptions where, you know, Frost was able to fire down the tower with his minigun and there was really nobody at home there. Now you have Rux trying to do the opposite on that bot side. He has his teleport up. Solo King does not, but Solo King is already in the mid and you also have Frost doing the same trick on the top side. So who says AD carries can't split push? Let's get excited. Yeah, I think both of these uh, AD carries love to split push. Thing is, his prototype, he's going to have to look for more picks. Shorter Ace will be there to back him up. This is kind of a team that if Prototype does split push, they can back him up very quickly in numbers. You know, you could have Maokai TP and you could also have the Nocturne just ultimate in there. But they also have team fighting with the Orianna, the disengage with the Janna. 
the ultimate from Maokai. Like, there's a lot of things here in favor of Final Five if they team fight. Xenith at the same time, they need to scale up, they need to ramp up. Well, they've been doing a pretty good job of avoiding direct conflict so far. Prototype trying to find some way into this mid side, but Frost not going to let him have it. And uh, yeah, you know, out of the AD carry splishing, split pushing potential, Frost is just got a little bit more if he's able to find it. Now, Prototype getting caught up takes a lot more damage than he's able to dish out. Easy talk about dodge and skill shots. He just walks right away from that Howling Gale. He's been throwing out some really good skill shots of himself, just chunking out Prototype, but he has Blade of the Ring King. He'll just heal himself up. He's looking for picks. He's not executing these ambushes as well as he would hope. And he has the exhaust, right? He's a fantastic duelist with that summoner spell. If he gets hit, he might be oh. able to do this. The shield's on, they get the ignite, but they aren't able to follow the damage right as soon as the stun duration ends. No out of there, I'm gonna flash, and they force it away. Now there's dual backing here. Rule 18 prototype, they're moving. Solo King's moving on. They have to cancel these backs because this tower could go down. Gate can't defend it alone. And I talked about how Easy loves to play these types of champions that poke that wave flare. He actually really likes the long range mages, and I guess Jace kind of fits into that category a little bit in terms of what he does in the team composition. But Syndra is definitely one of his top champions. It's this one assassin or one yeah. bursty champion that he uses. Well, he makes it look long range the way he's yeah. able to play that one out. And yeah, I mean, so far he's got himself three kills, no deaths and an assist, but he really has been making prototypes sweat most of this time. So again, pressure down the mid. They aren't directly engaging if they can, but if they get a pick, they know they can turn it into something huge, and they have so many tools to do it. We haven't even seen Mimo go in on a Cataclysm yet, and there's that potential. Yeah, he hasn't used a Cataclysm yet. We haven't really seen... Oh, again. Oh, really we have seen this before, but it's going to answer back. Shorter Ace. Uh-oh, where are my friends at? He's going to say it doesn't even matter. And there is going to be Rux. K1's already down out of that one. They were able to find so much damage. Rocket comes in. Fight. There's Rep the Cataclysm. Five. They're still chasing Final Five. Yeah, they might be able to do this one. Mimo's pretty low. Uh, Vengeful Maelstrom he is up. He's going to twist his advance. Finds Mimo. They were trying to assassinate on the backside, but they've got nothing. It's two kills to nil right now. And Zenith on the run. They still are able to Rux fight this flash. one out. Z Easy. Wow. He's, he's got close. He's going to go for it. One more shot will do it. Twist his advance, and a shutdown goes over to Rux. Frost is all alone in this mid lane. That's exactly what F5 needed. They're going to go ahead and clear this minion wave out, get some damage on this turret, because it's very low already. And then they can set up for the dragon. It's 50 seconds, so they just get ward control of it. And they're even going to push another one here. He's going to ambush to get some extra attack speed. Yeah, he has to walk around those Slam Chompers, though. Rux is still able to tank this one up, but talk about a window of opportunity. They should be able to fire this one down. Gotta be careful, though. Shockwave's in. They just tried to stop Jinx from assassinating everyone. Solo that King. could have been a triple kill. But oh. here comes Solo King. He finds Gate. He's exhausted. Ross is gonna answer back, but he's gonna give a life for it. Rux, he's so low, but he's so tanky. He's still going on this one, and Frost wants it. He's not excited just yet. K1 thinking twice oh. about this one. They're gonna face tank. Oh, oh, he gets the kill. The AoE Rockets get excited. Prototype answers. It's a double kill for Frost. And they just stayed too long, Zyrene. Yeah, I didn't think they were going to go for that second turret. I thought they were just going to sweep down to Dragon, give vision control back, and then be up in time for it. Here's oh, the ultimate. Here comes it's going to hit. It. It's oh! not going to. It's right between it. And they get away just in time, but they're going to take a consolation prize here. This tower is all gone, and it looks like we'll be seeing a third Dragon going over to Zenith in just a second. Yeah, well, they'll be up, but it would be really close. They'd have to rush all the way there. They'd have to have somebody stall it, but I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, they might bait this, actually. There's a red there, and is it going to bait Mimo into staying for it? It is, so they're not going to do the dragon just yet. Uh, they're getting a little greedy oh, here, actually. actually. They're trying for both. Who needs a smite? Well, Mimo, he does use that, and he might flag and drag over nope, this wall. Yeah, okay, so they're able to pick that one off. They just had all the time in the world, and they find he Rule 18. He's got nowhere to go. We've seen this story all game, and four deaths down. Rule 18 getting caught out once again, trying to get some vision. Yeah, they were able to get the dragon because they knew that the timers allowed them to do it. They were going to have to walk all the way back. F5, just not enough juice in the tank to get there. Rule 18 gets there. A little bit late to the party. Yep, tries to find a little thing that he can. But so far, really, Shorter Race and Rux have been kind of the shining stars of this team. Gate's been able to find a few edges here and there. But Prototype and Rule 18 have really not stepped up as much as they need are needed to. They did do really well in that fight. But then the... Return damage just wasn't enough. You saw Frost, no fear going in there and chasing people down. And he was able to do it. Yeah, I really like the fight that they had earlier, and I want to talk about that. It was when they ended up going in, they were they actually caught out at the start, and Shorter Ace went in off a Nocturne ultimate, and they grouped up as five very quickly, and they were able to pick off multiple members of Zenith because of the positioning. They were able to scatter this pick composition, which really relies on outnumbering you in bushes, and they were like, we're just a five-man unit. Now we're going to go ahead and just push through your team, separate them, divide and conquer, and it worked out perfectly.
Like, I really like the play there from Rux. He wasn't stopped in the Cataclysm. He was still wreaking havoc on that back line. Yeah. Now, in this this time in the game, it's, you know, it's even on towers. This is definitely much better for Final Five than it was during the last game at about the same time. They just have had so much trouble with follow-up. And you see Zenith, again, any chance they get, they see an edge, they see an advantage, they see a 5v4 or a free dragon, they will take it. And they will make it look easy. I free guess that's dragon. why he's called that. Get your free dragon. Get your free no, dragon no, no, right no, It's here. okay. It's okay. I won't take it. No, Zenith's going to go after it every time. Absolutely. And they really have not let up on this one. But Love that ward. They are going to be able to spot this. Here we go. Prototype. They know what's happening. He wants to come in, but he's already stunned up. Shorter Ace. Might have been a little early, but they oh, do they get the prompt Frost. delivery. Frost is going to prompt K1 to get his ulti out, but Frost is already getting a kill. Still getting away. Burn it, but it doesn't even matter. And Mimo, he might go down for this one, but the rocket's in. He still wants to fight it out. K1 just returns a little bit more damage, but they trade. Jungler for jungler. That could have been even worse for Zenith because of the fact that they had that ward in the middle of the lane. That's why you do that. You make sure where that you can see them while they're in fog of war. He saw everybody. He knew that they were gonna try and force that fight. Yeah. Shorter has his uh Riggle's Lantern, doesn't have his Feral Flare just yet, so he's lacking a little bit in the damage department, but he's looking to dive frost every time. Yeah. And he's almost able to pull it off. I mean, if they'd done that big shutdown, the five in one jinx, they need to take him out of the fight. As you can see, that's the only reason they answered a kill back anyways. So Shorter Ace, again, going in on the audible, but a really good play by Frost to try and zone people out. And K1, with the really timely Glacial Fissure, made sure that the damage really wasn't that bad. So a one for one trade isn't the worst thing at the end of the day. Yeah, and at the same time, Gate, he did get that Shockwave off onto two people in the back line, which was what they needed, because then that damage was not available. The Jinx is not available. One of their highest damage AoE members, 5, 1, and 2, was not able to get to that fight. His only contribution was the Super Mega Death Rocket on pretty much full HP members. Yeah. And with Zenith, you know, finding it still have a lead, it's slight. They can still do their thing, which is getting in the face and in the jungle of the opponent. Final Five has to wrestle some control back here, but they realize they're caught out. Rule 18 again, the stun on him in prototype. The Ooh. ball, it's gonna connect. Frost actually, all of his health almost gone between that and the little bit more that he was returned to from prototype. But again, they still were able to get out scot free. So Frost has to be careful here. He's uh. a little bit low if he wants to keep taking this one. Yeah, that's not exactly exercising too much caution there. He has some lifesteal with the Vamp Scepter. And he's looking to get, looks like he might get a Bloodthirster next, just so he can have a shield. And so oh, they catch Rule 18. 18 again, and they're going to spend so much on him. And that, well, that's just rude. But no, rude. All the ultimates. Rude 18. Rude 18. <laughs> well, he has had some trouble this game. Yeah, um, that's an Not just staying alive, but really just, it almost like, He's in the wrong place at the wrong time, but they know this. Zenith knows exactly where to check for him, and his team is not going with him because Final Five is not really wanting to try and fight these anymore. They're trying the split push strategy. Uh, Rux is doing well on his own, but they've given up so many towers for this, and they just don't have an answer. Rux now, he could go down. Yeah, he might get this tower, but come on. At this point, it's a consolation prize compared to what they've already given up. Yeah, and when you have a pick composition and you're warding as well as Zenith is, you're going to find the Janna out by himself every time that he is. Look at this, Rux. Yeah, he thinks it's a 1v1. He thinks the Solo King's alone, but not for much longer. Finding a Jinx. Oh, he might go back in this one. There's no tower to get executed on, so it might be a wild tree chase. And here they go. Rux, hey, I don't think he's going to last too much longer out of this one. Frost, is he going to pick the killer? Will be Solo King going to force it out? It looks like it's going to go over to Frost hey. at the end of the day. Get excited either way, but I mean... That kill was worth tree fitting. Eh, just about. <laughs> no, it was. The gold popped up on him. It was like, hey. GG. Mm -hmm. Tree Fitty got the tree. It might be deliberate. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, Maokai's not worth 50 extra gold. That'd be a pretty broken No, that'd passive. be <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, you, <laughs> with all that, uh, Zenith again. I mean, they trade a tower. They they do get some more gold back in their pockets. But the real big story of this is Frost. Seven and one. He's on a hyper carry. If you don't shut that down, you're going to have an absolutely awful time. And they don't even have armor. There's no armor here on that side. Really Exception of maybe rocks. Yeah, double Zonias, though, on Zenith. So they have a lot of baiting potential between those two members. And those are members that you want to focus. Everybody on this team is pretty much a threat for Zenith. Whereas Final Five, it's the double actives of Prototype trying to burst somebody out. The lack of vision that Shorter Ace is able to combine with that. As soon as Twitch pops up on your back line, it's going to be a really big scatter if Nocturne ulties at the same time. You won't really understand which direction you're getting hit from by the rat tat tat if you're one of the kind of co collateral members, like one of the ones in the way. Exactly. But everything that has really been done proper fight-wise 
for Final Five has been off the back of a Gage Shockwave, and now, well, another Dragon should go over pretty quick. They wanted to check at the Baron, but they realized nobody was home. So Zenith, once again, grabbing themselves another oh. one, but Shorter Ace going in under Frost, finds them all out alone, but maybe not. K1, Glacial Fissure's on, Frost is in trouble. Prototype. There's Prototype, he gets exhausted, but they're able to get away from this one. Three-man Three Shockwave, the Monsoon's out. They're getting chased down. The Rocket comes out, but it's Prototype coming up with a big pick. Solo King gets the Zanyas, but it's only going to delay his own death. And this is going to be a three for none, and Final Five find the fight that they needed. That is exactly the team fight that they've been looking for all game long, all series long. Gate, that is the most people he has hit with a shockwave this series. They're gonna go straight for this Baron because they already have vision control of it and they have the numbers advantage. This is a super easy Baron for them and that's gonna put them really close in terms of combat stats to Zenith after they buy. Yeah, but the only thing Zenith's gonna get out of all that is a rough timer. So a big Baron buff, 29 and a half minutes in off a massive fight. And again, the shockwaves are critical, but they were able to deliver shorter ace, saw blood in the water, saw frost, almost on his own, was able to go in and make it happen. And what a play. Prototype in the back too, exactly where he needed to be. Excellent team fighting from Final Five there. Yeah. Both actives on him, hitting people from the side, making them think about the Twitch as opposed to the Orianna. The multi-prong threat of those two coming from different angles is really big for this composition. They are actually right up there in terms of combat stats and gold effectiveness to Zenith Esports. The next fight, if there's another shockwave like that from Gate and it's already back up, would pretty much decide an inhibitor. The amount of chase that Final Five has is really what enabled that too, and you also can see that in some of the item choices. The uh, Bilgewater Cutlass being picked up, of course, by Shorter Ace, Prototype already having the Blade of the Rune King, but yeah, Zenith, uh, they're still in the gold lead, but I mean, that has to shake your confidence going into this one, and now Final Five moving forward, four members with this Baron buff, they have Shorter Ace in the back, they feel like they can push on something. There is one outer turret remaining for either team, and it looks like Final Five is eyeballing that one in the top. This Baron buff up is going to allow them to clear these waves very easily. Look at that. Rule 18. He has more items now than he had in the last game with that iron. Despite having of the iron a worse KDA this game. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's gotten that global gold from his team. He's gotten some global gold, whereas last time he was getting nothing for the most time. Yeah. And I think it's a pretty smart idea to delay the coin especially in favor of picking up the Locket as well. It's given his team a little more sustained. Massive minion wave here. They should be able to fire down this turret without too much trouble. And look at that. Rux just says, you have to deal with me yeah. before you can get to any of my team, and I'm just fine. Rux City is pretty much mobile at this point. He is the building. So you got to go through a building to get to his team. Just about. And, uh, well, the Solo Kingdom is starting to crumble right here in the top lane. Only the inhibitor towers remaining in any of these lanes. So final five kind of doing a hit-and-run strat, but they know they can fight this out with the Baron buff, and as you mentioned, the wave clear, the regen. They've just got a lot working for them right now, and they found this window, and they've been able to start getting an edge in this game. Yeah, and I want to talk about where these edges are. Rux, very, very tanky at this point in the game. He's going to have his Frozen Heart very shortly, and the most fed member on Zenith Esports is Frost. He's got most of the kills. He's got three items. He doesn't have his last Whisper just yet, so it takes him even longer to get through Rux. He's worried about himself because there's so much dive on Final Five's team, and there's very little peel on Zenith aside from possibly cataclysming. But at the same time, you have to hope you aren't cataclysming your own members because Gate's just going to take complete advantage of that. And then K1, he has some peel, but he's looking to be a little more offensive and worry about the Twitch. So everybody who can peel on Zenith's side has some other thing that is a little bit of a more of a priority. So Frost is pretty much on his own, despite being so fed. Yeah, and, and they have to protect time, him. Yeah, exactly. And Easy, he needs protection too. He's in that back line, 3-1 and 4, but this is pretty much even with a lot of the members on Final 5. And that's just it too. Final 5, they're able to take yeah. that back line out because they have so much dive potential that at this point, if you take away Easy or Frost, preferably Frost, you pretty much win the fight if you don't lose anyone immediately doing it. And that's why the Nocturne ulti ball delivery system, prototype hanging out on the back line, I mean, it's, it's all on gate, but he has really stepped up this game, and 2-1-7 and seven doesn't even do it justice. Yeah, and they have closed that gold gap with those plays that they made from grouping up. And Final Five is probably thinking, oh, we should group now. Like, I don't want to see anybody split pushing on this team if they actually want to win. And prototype, the fact that he's playing more of a team fighty type of Twitch now is really, really good. He didn't get any of those picks in the early game or that mid game. So now he's grouping up for these team fights and that's exactly what this team composition needs to do. And they needed to do that last game too. It's yeah. really a big thing. And I think that the things are kind of clicking for them. And Zenith is kind of panicking at this point because they had a goal lead that was much higher than this. And now it's down to about 1.8K. Yeah, they have had troubles with closing games in the past that has been 
one of the things that Zenith, when they don't get an absolute massive lead that they're able to overwhelm with, that is the win condition that Final Five has been finding. And right now, they're looking to just edge it anywhere they can. Dragon's up in a minute. They might be able to grab that one with the map control that they've secured for themselves. This would be their first Dragon in the series if they do do that. And Means a little bit less now, but still. Yeah, they've, got, they've gotten more Barons than Dragons. That's very true. <laughs> and uh, this was a very important Baron, even if it's off right now. Uh, they're just doing everything they can to push around. Again, this is... It's not the polar opposite of the last game, but something has clearly clicked this game for Final Five, and they're finding the fights they need. Zenith, I think they got a little bit lax, and they gave up some kills that really weren't necessary. Yeah, Rule 18 was out of position a lot against this pick composition. When you get into Champion Select, and you're loading into the game, you need to look at what the other team has, and what they're going to do to you, and what you should be doing to them. It's really, really big as a team captain, as a shot caller, and how to keep your, your basically your babies, your soldiers, away from the traps that the enemy is setting. Because the Janna was out of position, and Rule 18, you know, he's trying to ward, he needs to check himself, and also have somebody else check him too, and be like, you don't need to be there. We don't really need that at this moment, like, because if you die, we give it up no matter what. In all fairness, they have a lot of vision here, and here we go, Ulti. Shockwave, it's gonna get shielded out, oh my goodness, that is instantly shorter, Ace blowing up, they monsoon away everybody, but Final Five, I'm not sure if this is the fight they wanted, K1's so still tanky. in here, he's staking every single thing, they will find Solo King, and they just could not do any more than that, it ends up being one for two, still going in favor of Final Five, but yeah, you try to put that damage on Rux, and you can, can't take down the tree. Yeah, it's a really big problem here for Zenith, and they're gonna go straight after this top turret, there are some minions there, and it's going to be the ambush there for the extra attack speed from Prototype. And Prototype's damage was just off the charts at that point, as well as Gate. Look, Look at that, going. Go one. he's down, that's Prototype, he's exhausted. Well, Gate's exhausted, rather, they still are going, the Zap's gonna land. Frost is doing an amazing job zoning away here with the help of Easy, but still, a big win there for Final Five as they crack the inhibitor turret shell. Wow, that's just, this is the furthest that Final Five have gotten and it's pretty much off the back of Rux and Shorter Ace is calling there. That didn't look like it was going to be a great play. Like, if Rux was not as tanky as he was there, it would have been a big problem. And if, here's just a food for thought at this point in the game. If Final Five win this match, they swap sides again, and they were banning Maokai when they were on red side. They were banning three top lane champions. They might leave it open, and then that leaves Lee Sin open for a first pick, and saying, if you take Lee Sin, we get Maokai. But if you take Maokai, we get Lee Sin. So there, there are they those have back and a, exactly, and so showing this right here is really, really good. Just flexing your muscles on that champion. Rule oh, 18 boy. again. Yeah, they're able to find that little bit. He might be worth 210 gold, and it's ending up in the pockets of Easy. Baron is eight seconds away. It, that is pretty much the single worst thing that could have happened right now for Final Five. Exactly, he's getting caught right before Barons, right before Dragons, and it is costing them those objectives right off the bat. And here's the thing: he's the disengage of the team. They don't exactly need disengage during the Baron. You can kind of ulti people back into the pit. But out of the people to lose before the Baron, he is probably the best one if you had to lose somebody, if you had to sacrifice a teammate. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, they've sacrificed him a total of six times, pretty much. And now Zenith has control of that Baron area, but they're not interested in taking it just yet. They have to defend their fronts, but Final Five are giving it their all to try and keep them from starting that one. And it's kind of a guessing game here without the vision, and it looks like they will go for this. Solo King on the zone. Baron is going down pretty quick right now, but there is a response here. You see Shorter Ace making his moves. He's going to check through a pink brush. They know this is happening. They could go in for steal. Zenith's going to back away from this. Wow, they want the fight. Rux They're going to find so Rux. He is tanky. The shockwave's on. Solo King's going to Zanya's away from it. Shorter Ace still zoning, but it's Prototype picking up a rampage. He's getting kill so much Nemo. damage. They're doing it. Rux, he's tanking everything. They get a triple kill. Prototype, can he get more? Frost is on the run. It's a shutdown. They do answer back, but at what cost? Cost of four for two, they might get the ace. Easy's got nowhere to go, and Rux is on the chase. Run from the tree if you can. Rux is so damn tanky that it was a 4v5. They didn't give a damn. He goes straight after it. They win that fight off prototype's damage. Gates' shockwave was really bad. It was Zonia's off of that. And look at he's gonna go teleport and get them an inhibitor. Final five are making the right moves, and it's off of Rux, and they set him up from the early game with shorter aces ganks. Absolutely. They don't even need the Baron. They're going to take a big inhibitor off a massive minion wave. Should be able to push a couple more things before all said and done. Gate, he's feeling so confident and happy he can just take a couple turret shots. But yeah, Rux, you cannot take down the tree. This guy has been so sustainful this entire fight, and they've been Focusing him. Yeah, and the fact that the last Whisper is pretty much completed before that for Frost, he's the only one who really does any damage to him, and at the same time, he has himself a frozen heart and so much armor to back it up, and he's going to go for a Randuin's next. This tree is just so tanky, it's 
almost impossible to chunk through him with this team composition of Zen because the cast on top isn't even going to do that much damage. Yeah, they've really got themselves in a rut here, Zenith. Uh, finding themselves actually down in the gold. So after all that swing, after a couple of bad fights like that, it has been absolutely massively turning in favor of Final Five. And, you know, the way this is trending, we could be looking at a game number three. We'll be looking at one, but right now we're looking at the Baron staring into the face here. There's a lot of engage options from Final Five. They don't have the Paranoia just yet. He's going to have to walk straight through, but they are all right there. If they get Rule 18 to push them into a bad situation, possibly in the pit, like you have to be on the outside or else Janna ultis you in, and then Gate ultis on top of that. This so is the kind of place cool. where games can get decided. It's tense. It's, it's tense, very tense. There are super minions pushing into the base of Zenith at the same time. And there's still a wave on the bot side that they have to contend with now. Shorter Ace, going to realize oh. he checked into that one. That was a mistake. He's going to go down. Mimo's going to get the zone on. They have a teleport now. Rux is still there, but what can he really do? He has to make a play here. The team Zenith, they have a one for one. The junglers are gone. Baron's off the table. And that's pretty much how it's going to be, but they might want to fight again. A prototype used He's his ultimate. Gonna they stop the backs. Still have the ultimates here, and the flash is about to be up for Rux. There are super minions. They're in pushing to the top. They're just they trying have to, to stop this back. They can do it if Solo King isn't able to back. This is going to be rough for them. They're just going to give it up and go to middle, though. Looks like they're going to lose one. Yeah, one tower's down. They have Solo King back, but. I mean, that's a pretty big oversight, too. You cannot afford to be fighting or trying Ooh. to Baron Dance when there's super minions. And he can't defend this. There's two super minions. They just get one. Easy's going to throw it, but they nearly lose Ooh. that second one. And they are going to give up a dragon here. Again, final five. Well, it may have been an even fight, but they get more in the end. It's their first dragon of the series. And the reason they get more is because of that inhibitor that was pushing against them. Zenith was very aware of that in the back of their mind. And I really like the fact that Final Five have been grouping up with their team fight composition. It's something they didn't do game one. They fixed it middle of game two. They had just needed that one fight, and they got it. And then they're like, oh, this works. And they, they kept doing it. Zenith, at the same time, were very pick-oriented. And you said they have trouble closing out games. With this composition that they've made for themselves, it's very hard to close out a game unless you split push some things down, and then you dive this team. But there's so much disengage. There's a ton of re-engage here for Final Five. And the fact that the damage output of Zenith is pretty much solely on the sustained damage of Frost. And he can't get through Rux. It's pretty difficult to take down that tree, and they've been trying all game, but they have a lot of damage. It's just, it's a lot of it's on Frost. The rest of it's on easy. If either of those targets are taken out, Final Five just finds Ooh. these edges. And yeah, look at that. They nearly got a chase on. Really, team, despite the fact that he's been getting caught, has actually really not been a problem overall for this team. Yeah, and Rux, instead of going for the Randuins, he doesn't need that because Randuins will slow even more attack. He goes for the Thorn Mail. He's just trying to make Frost's life a living hell. Like, He's making it so you attack me, you're killing yourself. Hopefully that Bloodthirster is worth it. Yeah, they're doing everything they can to make sure he's as shut down as possible. Still 10 and 3 on that Jinx, but what has he done lately? Ooh. This Baron, it's getting low. Mimo could go in for the steal, the rocket. It's going to go over to Shorter Ace, though. And Mimo now goes to advance on. They find Shorter Ace. The chase is on. Shorter Ace is low, but they get the Shockwave. It's massive. Solo King Zanya's out of it, but it's not going to be so lucky. Mimo, K1, Frost all go down in a triple kill, going over to Prototype. They're on the chase. The Quadra, can he get more? He wants the Penta. He's going to be running for it. They're chasing it down. Twist advance. They're going to give it up to him. He's going to pick this one up in a delayed shot. Pets a kill from Prototype. And that's going to be game. Final five. They got that Baron. They got the team fights they needed. And they're going to end the game. They're going to take this to a game three. Absolutely. A massive comeback after that first game. And they are going to be going to game number three. Final five really showing up over Zenith Esports. And boom goes the Nexus. After figuring out how to play their team composition, they really showed how confident they are on these champions. They became way more confident in their play, grouped up, and showed that you know, Zenith, despite having that really good first game, it was really more about Final Five not playing to their team comp strengths. And I completely agree with that. When I saw that, they were just playing a really, really bad game one. And I think picks and bans this next game is not going to be the same as game one. I think they aren't just going to let that happen again.